I've arrived early to surprise a fancy oyster bar in Brighton's Bohemian Kemptown district. My challenge is called Ruby Tate's. It's in a camp alternative area where most people read The Guardian. They like eating out, but they do so with a conscience. Morning, sir. But they're taking it a bit too far with their pretty boy eco taxes. Uh, yeah. Rumor has it that I am a bit of a gay icon, yeah. Uh, featured in the top 10 last year, and uh, yeah, a bit of a worry every year we're going up. This is a perfect area to set up a restaurant. It's got a really nice social buzz about it. They're not short of money round here. This is almost like sort of Soho on the sea. Oh dear, oh dear. Can't exactly jump the lights of this fucking thing, can you? Former star of stage and screen, Annan Love, opened upmarket seafood restaurant Ruby Takes a year ago. He thought we'd spotted a gap in the market for fancy dining. It's a different atmosphere, a totally different atmosphere than an all restaurant. People don't just come to eat, they come to the dining experience. Alan serves up expensive seafood to Kemp Town. Trouble is, no one wants it, and he's losing a grand and a half a week. I think fish is the way forward, the oysters and the fish. It's something that's going to be bigger in, in, the, in the very near future, not the distant future. Undeterred by his huge losses, Alan thinks he's got it right and spends his time dreaming of his great starring roles. A lot of West End shows, Cats, Godspell. This is my stage now. You know, this is where, this is where I get up and perform. <laughs> One door open. <laughs> you know, I call it the Alan Love Show, but it kind of isn't the Alan Love Show. It's, it's, it's just me. Yeah, if people are laughing, I don't care whether they laugh with me or at me. As long as they laugh. <laughs> While Alan dreams of his past, he ignores the kitchen, leaving it all to his two chefs. First, there's laid-back Aussie traveller, Jamie. But there's no sort of passion there. There's no fucking motivation to fucking come to work, you know? I'll be honest with you, I'm just doing it for the fucking... for the moolah, man. But there's also volatile, fiery Frenchman, Alex, who can't control his temper. Okay, Thank you. You go out. You go out. I ask you to please. Finish. Please, you go out. You are... Please, you go you out. Don't Thank you very much. Don't come back in kitchen. Okay. I don't care what people okay. think of me, you know? The only people I care is, like, my fucking parents and my girlfriends, the rest. Everything's great, apart from... <laughs> the fucking French room. But everything isn't great. Alan's about to go bust and he's in denial about it. The genius of the people in the, in the world that are geniuses, they surround themselves with genius. That's their genius. Android Webber. Is one example. I'm the nice guy, he's a <laughs> And what I try and do in the kitchen is have the best that I can afford to have. <laughs> Honestly, if I was out, I'd come here and fucking fire all of us. But he doesn't, man. It's, he's paying us to fucking. He knows we sit on our ass. They're not expecting me at Ruby Tate's till this evening. Right, I really want to catch this restaurant napping. I'm going to jump in there now and join a table for lunch and see where they serve normal customers without them knowing that I'm coming. For the first time, I've secretly asked a couple of foodies to go undercover and order for me. I don't want the chefs making a special effort on my behalf. I want to eat what gets served every day. It's not five star, it's not even three stars, but in the end, it's not shit. 25 quid. How are you? Good to see you, buddy. Call the early train. Oh, the early train? Yeah. Okay. How are you? Welcome to Ruby Tate's. How are you, man? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking got us. <laughs> My dining companions have ordered a plateau of freedom air, usually served cold. That's the strangest plateau of freedom air I've ever seen in my entire life. Where's the ice? It's actually hot, man. Uh, it's warm, yeah. Come on. That's the first. Well, you think for 55 quid they'd take the shit sack out of the lobster, wouldn't you? Uh, nothing worse than a gritty lobster. How was your, um, how was your oyster? Interesting. Mm, I don't fancy those, though. This expensive seafood just goes stale as no one's buying it. It smells. Yeah. Not for me. It looks like someone's put a dog's dick in the fucking <laughs> oyster. What is it? Jesus Christ. What happened to him? Holy fuck. Is that normal? Like that, yes. I mean, that's just like a little rubber elastic band. It's like eating the inside of a golf ball. And what's he say? He doesn't like them. 
He says that's like a golf ball. And that? I think he said it was bitter. Bitter? Yeah. Uh, Luke, can you put that in bin, please? Serving old, poorly cooked seafood is dangerous. Whoever's the head chef shouldn't allow it. Oh, seriously, mate, can you that fucking camera out of my face, dude? Seriously, just for 30 seconds here. You can tell now everything is shit, but we don't need Gordon for telling us that. We know that from the start it's shit. Lemon and cake are very sauce, but you're living the... The menu is far too expensive for the area, and as for the artwork... Did you like the dessert, Was sick on the walls? <laughs> no, the artwork is by a local artist. Mm. There's a pair of knickers on the wall there on that there painting. Is, yeah. I mean, but is that legit? That is a pair of encrusted yeah. knickers. It is, it's, um, and it's part of the artwork as well. Yeah, why not? Next up, sea bass served on a bed of chorizo. That's definitely farmed. Farmed sea bass from Greece and 100 metres from the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like the chef's given up, bored, and fallen out of love uh, with fish, really. If it's not available locally caught, then take it off the menu. Yeah. Oh, so it's like us. <laughs> Meal, disgusting. Total cost, 175 quid. Right. Hello, Hello, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. How was your meal? Yeah, um, interesting and different. Hey, is, he, is he paying for this? I'm paying. <laughs> it's obvious why people aren't coming. Bad food at rip off prices. The turnover being so dire, mm -hmm. how long can it continue to stay open? Can you get through the summer? No. I mean, I just borrowed another 30 grand, but that's the end of it. I've got no more. So if that goes, it's over. <laughs> Don't get upset. Hey, <laughs> it's good to meet you. Don't get upset. Hey. Yeah. Get some fresh air. I can see it in your face. I can see how fucking painful it is. Well, it's just you get to the, it's the, the, end, the end of the boat. Oh. And, and when there's no more. I didn't realise things were that fragile, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes? No, it's not fragile, it's just, you know, sometimes you just, uh, something hits a nerve, and, and, and unfortunately, this hits a nerve, because, uh, because you know, I try not to look at it, and I try not to think about it. But it's still trying to find the money to pay the lounge, yeah. you know? It's all that shit. And I'm very proud of what I've done, and it's probably not right, and maybe I'm full of crap, but it's, but it's just what I, put my whole life into it. Everything I have ever yep. earned, my yep. whole life, is okay. in this place. Distraught Allen's right on the edge. I'm going to confront the head chef who's responsible for this mess. Gentlemen, Mr. Ramsey would like to say hello. This is Jamie. Jamie. Good How are you, buddy? You are? Yeah, you from where? Uh, Australia. Australia. Yeah. Good to see you. Hi, Isaac. Hi, Isaac. How are you, buddy? And Alex. Nice to meet you. Alan. Alex. Enchanté. Enchanté. From France. <laughs> from France, oui. And... Chef. Chef. Not head chef, just a chef. Chef. Oh, sorry, chef. So you must be the head chef? No. No. I'm the same as Jamie. We work together as a team always together. You have no head chef in this kitchen. Right. So who takes charge now? I'm just trying to figure out the, uh, the no setup one. of the kitchen. Well, the menu or the kitchen? Both. Fuck me. No one really. Look, honestly, man, look, we just get the sort of get the job done. We're in the ship, my friend. And your attitude stinks. Why are you here then? Just to get a bit of money and travel on. I'm moving on. I'm not I here to be a hero. To, I'm not asking you to be a hero. I'm just asking you to find some form of passion. Let me talk to you about lunch. The Prat of Freedom Mayor was fucking hideous. How the fuck can I sit in the restaurant, beach 100 metres in front of me, and eat a farm sea bass from Greece that should be in a fucking Chinese restaurant in the middle of Soho? Yeah. Because it's hard to get fish in Brighton. What? Yeah. I know he's wrong. I know he's wrong. Like, close to the sea, he's supposed to have, like, 20 fishermen on the fucking seafront. There's no fresh fish in fucking Brighton. Where? What shop? Where we can buy them? What shop? Like, fish supplier. What, what about the fish market? Alex, you're 32 years of age. Yeah. Yeah? You speak fucking good English. Yeah? Yeah. And your attitude stinks. Why she stinks? Tell me. Oh, Don't judge me like that, you know, because it starts to piss me off now. Have I'm you not... given up? Yeah, I told you, yeah, I've given up for that. Because I'm not interested enough by what I do every day. So why don't you fuck off back to France? Just about all the customers go out and say it's great. <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? You know, in their defence, you know, not my defence, but... I can't believe my ears. Alan denies there's anything wrong with the food. This guy's lost touch with reality. 
How long can you both continue taking the piss out of him? That guy burst into tears in the bar. I don't know if you realise how fragile he is right now. Yeah, we do. He looks like a guy's about to fuck off from Brighton Pier and jump off the end. Sentimental old actor Alan Love's posh seafood restaurant is about to fold, and he's harbouring a dark secret. One would think that if you opened a seafood restaurant, you'd actually like to eat seafood. I uh, have a bit of an aversion to fish, yeah. Just because I had a bone in my throat as a kid and three days and I couldn't, and I had a real problem with it and, and if I get a bone, I get physically sick. How old are you when you got the bone stuck in your throat? <laughs> Probably about five. Five, how old are you now? 60. 60. It's been a while. It's absurd. How can Alan judge his menu if he doesn't even eat it? But what else is wrong? I want to know what the locals think. You look cool, trendy, yeah, dapper. If I said to you the word Ruby Tates, what does it mean? Ruby Tates. Sort of curry thing, I suppose. Ruby Tates, what does it mean? Something to do with potatoes. Why have you been in? The decor. Pretentious with no substance, perhaps. Yeah. What do you think of the decor? A bit 80s, though, I would yeah, say. Yeah, uh -huh. But yeah, it just looks a bit wanky. What do you look for in a seafood restaurant here? Um, fish and chips. Alan's Ponzi restaurant offers very expensive, badly cooked seafood, stupid decor, meaningless name, and what the people of Brighton want is good, locally caught fish cooked simply, farm sea bass, and a hot plat of freedom air will not get the punters back into Ruby Takes, that's for sure. The slacker chefs are paid well to cook dross. I need to investigate what they're doing wrong. Expensive lobster will only attract niche customers, and they won't come back if it's badly cooked. Uh, madam, what did you have? I had the poached lobster. Poached lobster. Which was tepid. Is it tough? Yes, it's tough. Yeah, flavourless, wasn't it? You've got to say yeah. I'm going to get to the bottom of why this lobster tastes so tough. Jesus. How come they're all cooked? Uh, you don't cook these to order? Uh, no, they cook them uh, before. They just blanch in water for, like, four minutes, that's it. Really? They look like they've been cooked for a lot longer than four minutes. There's so much money here. But why are they all cooked and separated from their bodies? Because uh, for when uh, they use them, they can pick up straight away like that. Jesus. Look, another shit set. There's 200 pounds worth of lobster here. Pre-cooking is wasteful and ruins the taste. It's balmy. When, when did these arrive? Uh, this morning. But they're all open. They arrived this morning. I oh, know, but you're not serving them, are you? But they're dead. They're all open. Some not inside. What? Alex, come on, fuck me, I'm not blind. I know, I know you're not blind, God. They're, they're open, every one of them's open. So are we using them tonight? If we need some, yeah. We'd... But you'll kill somebody. They're all open, they're dead. You can't serve them, Alex. Yeah, I know. You're I... not that fucking stupid. No, I'm not fucking stupid about that. I know a little bit about fish. So are we going to serve these tonight? No. Thank you. Fucking hell. Put them in the bin. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. Those muscles could have been fatal. I'm going to tackle Alan about the kitchen disasters. Bizarrely, he acts like there's no complaints. There's no sense in lying, I'm telling you the truth. In general, people love it. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking amazed. At what? I've been here the first day. I found fucking bought palm sea bass, open fucking mussels. <laughs> The most horrendous fucking pack of freedom air I've ever seen in my entire life. And now you're thinking that it's rare that someone's complaining about it. No, I'm not finding it rare. I'm just I'm, I'm telling you. You're what, a very good no, actor. No, 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 no. I'm telling you what I'm told. No, I don't need to bullshit, and I'm not going to lie. No, you're because I know, but no, bullshit. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. So I've been honest from fucking day one, and I will always be honest. You're not going to get lies out of me, you're going to get the fucking truth. Yeah. If, someone, if people are complaining, I tell you people complain. They don't complain. All of what do you want to think? It's not about what I want. Well, no, but no, but you I'm telling you, but go you're on, amazing. Man, I'm telling you the you're truth. Still no, but you're, no, you're telling me I'm a liar. Don't tell me I'm a liar. Don't do that, man. I'm not acting. I'm telling the truth. Did I, did I call you, you a liar? Yeah, you call me an actor. That what did acting I just is bullshit. What did I just say? You said, you said people are not like So the muscles were fucking closed, were they? Yeah, it's got nothing to do with that. I didn't see the muscles, so I'm taking your word. Yes, they no, were closed. Uh, listen, I have no, they were open. I ain't. Don't tell me I'm acting and I'm lying. Because I ain't. And I ain't, man. And it ain't happening. You're doing ain't a good show. A really good job. Thanks. Um, you're out of order. You're out of order telling me I'm doing a show. I ain't doing a show. I'm you're running, I'm running, point. doing things. Oh, no, bullshit. You know, I said, you amaze me. All these yeah, things I'm going on in your kitchen. You still don't give a fuck. Of course I give a fuck. If you didn't fuck, you'd do something about it. 
Sorry? Say it off. You're stupid ass. Why do you think I don't give a fuck? How you're dare you? How you're dare scared. you say you're I don't give a fuck? You're scared. What am I scared of? What, you? I'm not scared of. No, not me. Hey. What? Scared about it. Your shit. Your shit scared of me. Oh, I don't know. Fine. Fine. Stop. You just called me a silly ass. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't got the bollocks to go in there and tell them the truth. The chefs have taken advantage of Alan, but only because he's weak. Alan's in denial about what's happening in his own kitchen. Where's the boys? Oh, they've gone outside for a cigarette. All oh, right. Well, I want you to understand something really important. You may not like what I'm going to say, mm -hmm. but whatever it is, I'm here to help. And you must never, ever forget that. But what I'm more concerned about is the fact that you're in denial. OK. The minute and the quicker you come out of denial, the quicker we can work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the problem with the kitchen, man. How much fucking lobster is there? Yeah. Now, I feel for you. I'm about Not the just wallet. your fucking your wallet, but where the fuck you're gonna be in three months' time if fucking shit like that's cooked every day. Well. But I cannot work with someone that's in complete denial. If that be the case, then Gordon, I don't know what to say, mate. Because I'm not in denial. I'm just saying, talk to me about the problems, show me the problems. I didn't know today that the problems existed, and I should have known. I know I'm wrong, I should have known. But I didn't know, because okay. I put trust into the departments that okay. I felt needed trust in okay. Can we work together? Sure, we can work together. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the kitchen sucks. You know, all the staff are crap. You know what? What the fuck am I doing here? I might as well shut the door and open a fucking bicycle shop. Last night told me everything. Expensive food wasted, leaderless chefs and a restaurant owner acting like everything's fine, merrily ignoring the meltdown. I've heard Alan's put his house on the market. How are you, buddy? Hello. Are you well? How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? I mean, I knew things were quite fucking bad, but I didn't realise... Why'd you have to sell it? Just to keep everything going. And we're going to live. Uh, um, yeah. Do you have to sell it? Yeah, of course I have to sell it. Is it the pressure from the bank to sell it, or is it just cash flow for the restaurant? Uh, it's just cash flow for the restaurant. I've just borrowed as much as I can to get some mortgage. Mortgage is 430 grand, and, you know, in the last six months, I've borrowed 140,000 pounds to put into the restaurant. Yeah. Fucking hell. There's a lot of riding on this, huh? Working out together, you know that. There's just some real tough decisions that need to be fucking made instantly, you know that. And I can see it's your fucking life and soul. I can see how much it means to you. I, I, I totally get it. I read it. If we can't save the business, Alan will lose his home. See, so the daily takes. Seventeen pound. Mm-hmm. It's a bit soul destroying. I mean, I got one day. We took three pound twenty-five. That was a beer. Fucking hell. <laughs> We're in the middle of the fucking season. We need to find a way of doubling the turnover. I'm not thinking fucking lobster thermidor. I'm thinking, look at these figures, fucking fish and chips. I've got a trick up my sleeve to get Kemp Town's bohemians eating en masse at Ruby Tate's. Sustainable fish, pollock, lemon sole, gurnard, and done in a different way where the customer gets a choice. Is it fried? Is it grilled? Is it poached? Right your feet, gentlemen. Watch out. Freshly caught fish just might inspire these chefs. Farm sea bass is out. I need something cheap and sustainable for tonight's fish and chips. Rumour has it you can't buy fresh fish in Brighton. What the fuck is this? I agree I was wrong. Well, fuck me. A Frenchman admitting he's wrong. Name me one good, solid fish that can be a perfect fish and chip. Use pollock. Look at that, baby. Absolutely amazing. And they're in abundance. They're sustainable, environmental friendly in terms that we're not running short of them. Yeah. That's caught by a local boat, landed this morning off of the channel out here, out here on the race. Yeah. Pollock is cheap and in plentiful supply, so no more throwing profits away on unsold lobster. 
I've never seen it before. It's fucking massive. Keep it simple, it's our favourite. Everybody loves fish and chips. The smart chef's answer to Alan's financial woes is pile them high and sell them cheap. Portion after portion of fish and chips. Fucking house for sale this morning. That upset me. Don't ask me how fucking upset this man got. It was fucking disgusting. It's not your fault, but you're part of it. OK? I'm not blaming you individually, but you're working for this man, and if you're going to fucking take the money, then do the work for it. OK? okay. okay. Jamie, same for you. Yeah. Just show a little bit of passion to why the fuck you're a chef. Yeah, do you understand? Oh, well, I'll pay for your flight to fuck off back to Australia, because there's no point you being here. Yeah. Right. You and I are going to make fish and chips. Okay. Just lightly seasoned, yeah? Okay. Into the flour. Nice coating of batter. Yeah? And then... The batter is given colour and kicked by some curry powder. They're really, yeah? yeah. Fish comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and seasoned. Nice piece of pollock. Where are the chips, please? A UK national treasure. Good old fashioned, yeah? Fish and chips. Similar to cod. Alan's so hooked on the new dish, he's forgotten his phobia. Yeah, Alan, you're eating fish for this time. You've eaten fish for yeah. a while. Good? I'm eating fish. Good? Yeah. Let me win. And it's wonderful until I get a bone, and then everybody. Hike quick. <laughs> yeah, it's been 40 years since I've eaten anything, any fish at all, and today I broke the fear. We should sell nothing else tonight except bollocks, because it's so fresh. Pollock. Pollock, sorry. Not bollocks. Not bollocks. <laughs> not bollocks. <laughs> I'm gambling on the nation's favourite tonight. Only high volume sales and reasonable prices can save Alan. I've invited some Kemp Town locals to tuck in. Do you want to go have a look outside, so you check out the dining room? I just did. Yeah? Yeah. And? And it looks like it's going to be fun. Busy? Yeah. Busy? Yeah. yeah. Good. Two more fish of the day. That's 11 fish of the day in total. Lovely, man. Get out of your fucking comfort zone, you're right? Really fucking good. We're full. But these chefs aren't used to hard work. Can they cook consistently? Which I have to say, I've never heard of Pollock, but um, so far, so good. Very nice, actually. The uh, weights are recommended to me, so... When was the last time you had a nice piece of pollock? I've never had it. Never. Tonight it's done in a crispy batter, homemade chips. So, is it all the way now? Good. All has just come through. Mm -hmm. The batter is very thin and crisp, and it's absolutely lovely. And the fish itself, it's such a fine texture, it melts in the mouth. That's nearly 20 portions in the last 15 minutes, you know that? No fucking around. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Six Have more one. now, yes? Yep. The restaurant is full up. Are ready? Yep. For me, the most important thing about tonight's fucking food is it's local produce from down there. There's no fucking farm sea bass from Greece. Yeah, there's no lobsters from fucking, you know, Canada. This is local produce, caught, straight off the boat, into the batter and served. How's your pollocks? Oh, delicious. Very good. Very good. First time I've had pollock, and I enjoy it. I shall have it again. How are yours, dear? I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you said that to me about my bollocks. I thought you were great in the Queen, by the way. I beg your pardon. That's how you speak to your people. No, you feel like reborn, I don't know, like you feel you do something, you're just proud of yourself. That's it, just to do something different, you know, like, yeah. This Tuesday's take-ins are phenomenal. Alan's made two grand when he'd normally take 200 quid. So if we can do two grand on a fucking Tuesday, with 80% of our clientele having fish and chips and a glass of fucking wine, I'm sorry. By the time we get to fucking Saturday, we should be sort of, you know, eight, nine, ten grand. But from where we've gone to where we are is... Yeah. We've won nothing. And tomorrow morning, your house is still up for sale. Yeah. Alan's at last proved he's got some guts. But will he risk revamping the psychedelic decor of Ruby Tate's? which the locals hate. Well, I hope they had not been warm, that's all I can say. <laughs> it's always been sick. I'm running out of time. The menu's changing, and so must the decor. It's time for the knickers to come off. I can't let him just destroy it. I can't do that, and I won't do that. You know, I've got, you know, I've got to stand up and be a man. You know, you start, if he sells around and says, all the paint's got to come to the wall, change the colour, change the tablecloth. I hate the glasses. Well, sorry, mate, that's my, that's my opinion. You know what, my opinion is really relevant because it's all my money. Let's have a quick um, walk around the restaurant yep. together. And give me, um, 
Give me the inspiration behind this ghastly decor. I don't agree with you. Explain the colours, then. Is there any method in your madness? The colours came from the, the original painting that I got, which I liked over there. So you bought the painting and then designed mm -hmm. the restaurant on the back of it? Yeah. It's like something that Jimmy Savile would keep his fucking jewellery in. Well, if that's what you think, that's OK. I, don't, I disagree with you. Do you want fish on the wall? Like, you know, I mean, you, you know, I'd awesome. rather have a fucking piece of fucking fish on the wall than a fucking crusty pair of fucking knickers. No, no, see, that, see, that insults me as well. Well, because it's because a pair I, of knickers. No, use a pair of knickers. Don't use a crusty pair of knickers. It's so out of order because it's so okay. detrimental to the artist and also to me. Right, so you're taking it personally. No, that's it now. That's it now. Mm. Yeah. No, you, no, you're just... No, 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 cross but, the no, line. no Cross the line again. You'll be out of you're order. Cross the line again. I tell you I don't like the decor of the restaurant. Sure. You start getting yeah. upset. Go for it. Go for it, man. Not happening. I'm not going any further with it. It's bullshit. Why well, do no. you feel the necessity to You're insult me? again. Is that, where's it, where's is the script? Is there's it, a script. Is, is, read the script. Is this a big defensive thing that you've read got? Read the script. Why don't you read your own script? I'm not taking Winging. your shit. Winging. Not taking your shit. Your shit? I'm not taking your shit. Hold on you a minute. It? What do you mean taking You know what? It? I'm talking my to you about that. I don't care. It's your opinion. That ain't my fucking opinion. You bought it. It ain't my opinion. You don't like it? Tough shit. No, I like it. It looks great. It sounds great. And good, why are you working yourself up like this? Good. Because that's what it's about. I hit a nerve. That's what it's about. Fuck Good. you. Thank fuck for that. It's finally come out. Right, should we get back to the decor? Let's not. Don't call me a liar, Gordon. You want to fucking don't call me a liar, man. Because right. you do that, you're out the fucking door with the camera crew. And I'm telling you that. Kick me don't out the door. Don't call me a liar. Because I don't out, fucking lie. Kick me out the fucking door. Now he walks off. Should we talk about the decor? Will you stop acting like a baby, then? No, you stop, ta you stop acting like a prima donna, and then we, then we both got half a chance. There's no reasoning with you, is there? There isn't really, is there? At times like this, I think you deserve to sink. OK, Gordon. Very I'm good I'm sorry you, for insulting your pants that have been sprayed 18 times with paint. They're not crusted, mm. they're just Dulux coated pants. You know what, I'm sorry, mate, I've had it. I don't know why we're God, discussing this anymore. You don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so you told me to go. Home? Yeah, let's go, man. You've just been Gordon Ramsay. Mate, you can't do anything else. You've got no right to say that. Sure. Sure, I've got a right. I've got, I've got every right to say. Is that the same as you say to me? For a man that's that far in the shit, you'd think you'd take something on the chin. Acting like a baby gets him nowhere. There's not much more anyone can do. The show's over. I'm out of here. Alan denies the truth in front of his face. He's going down with his knickers flying half-mast. Do you know what? He ain't God. He's Gordon Ramsay, a successful businessman. Do you know what? It ain't the fucking be-all and end-all of life. Screw him. Alan's thrown me out at Ruby Tate's. He lost it when I suggested I change his naff 80s decor. In a last-ditch attempt at reconciliation, I'm taking him to a successful rival fish restaurant to see how they do it. You can go back to Ruby Takes and I can be in London by 6 sure. o'clock. Sure. I think you're missing one fucking key point. I'm not here to get personal. I ain't got a fuck about the piece of art. I really yeah. don't give a fuck so, about the piece of art. Yeah. It wasn't about that. Right. It was about the wording and the... The crusty down. knickers. But you that's know, the way I am. Yeah, I know. And then, that, then you I'm not changing. I don't understand okay. that as well. Let's go back to what we spoke about, the decor. What's the first thing you feel when you walk into here? Personally? Cold? Absolutely cold. Stone cold. Yeah. Um, it takes 20 grand a week. Yeah. It makes money. It is modern. Yes. That's what's got to happen next to Ruby Takes. It's got to be brought into the 21st century. Okay. I do agree. I agree. I still have to have my personality. Yeah, I'm staring at it. OK. That's the biggest decor personality. You can't buy that shit. So that's not decor, that's you. That is fundamentally, absolutely paramount. Without you, we're fucked. <laughs> have you always been this stubborn? Yeah. On stage? Yeah. <laughs> Don't change, will you? <laughs> well, not. There ain't no way. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, After you, sir. ladies first. <laughs> now we've buried the hatchet, I need to get back to saving the business. Alan's staff don't respect him. He must show them who's boss. I've called a staff meeting on the rolling high seas. There's a storm brewing and Ruby Tate's needs a lifeline. Chopping water. 
Tate's, isn't it? <laughs> Just like Ruby Tate's, yeah? yeah, 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 yeah. Up and down. On the verge of fucking sinking. Alan can deny the truth no longer. His staff think he's a walkover. They're going to review his performance. Right now, I want all of you to give me one fucking good point and one bad point on Alan. Seriously, think about it, yeah? One good point and one bad point. This isn't going to be pretty. Alan's a terrible boss. First one. Not strict enough. Doesn't come on, my respect. Good point, too nice. I'm not picking on you. Here. No, I know you're not picking on me. I'm trying to fucking Absolutely, open your eyes up to what the 100%, 100%, fuck you are doing sure. running a business. And what's coming out of this is that you're just one big fucking soft, happy-go-lucky, sweetie pie that they love taking from you. Does anyone see you as a boss? No, I'm not. Who do we answer to? No one. No one knows who to answer. There's no sort of real leader. There's no boss. And we need a boss. Can Alan be ruthless and sack bad staff? In this exercise, he'll have to be assertive and decide who stays and who walks the plank. Convincing time, Alex. And I want to prove myself and everybody we can do it. And I think it's important because I'm French and I'm proud. Alan. Uh, but I do think I need to be assertive and I'm afraid you're just going to have to walk the plank. Ali. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> On the plank. Oh, it's just going to be the highway, kid. Hop it. <laughs> Does she walk the plank? Do you know what? I can let Nancy stay because I think Nancy's got the heart and the experience and she works her ass off. Quite possibly the most laid-back chef in Britain <laughs> today on the fucking plank. Give me the fucking job as head chef. You need a leader in there? I'm your leader. It's just because you're an arsehole. Get off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Any last request? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Watch this space is the, the bottom line. I can be as assertive as I need to be. I'm a tough guy, I'm a tough guy. I have to be. They call it a Napoleonic complex. When your little people take the piss out of you. It's fighting talk from Alan, but he has to prove himself. His two chefs have definitely spoilt the broth. Tonight, I'm going to choose just one of them to be leader. Every kitchen needs a head chef for discipline, control, insight and fucking pushing standards out. Here, they got very comfortable, very relaxed and it's not busy, so why bother? A head chef needs to be a natural leader and cool under pressure. Oh, oh come on, guys. Fuck me, not tonight. Uh, Jamie. Yes. Uh, Alex. If someone wants the head chef job here, they're going to work for it, do you know what I mean? They're going to really bust their fucking balls, come out of their shell and... Prove to fucking me that you are that hungry for that head chef job. Uh, yeah. uh, listen, man, this table 25 has not even been called away. Already Jamie's getting confused about the orders. Sorry, my bad. My mistake. My mistake. It has been called away. Listen, slow the pace a bit down if you can, kid. Yep. Yeah. You can start to sharpen it. Slacker Jamie's not used to hard work and a stack of orders. Relax. OK, sorry. Yeah? Yeah. Get a grip and fucking control it. I'm okay. trying to. I'm Good. trying to. Or... You fuck off and I'll do it. Cool, cool. You okay. fuck off, I'll do it. Huh? Hey. I got it. No, no but uh, listen. Oh, yeah. No. You're more laid back than a fucking ironing board. So, <laughs> you know, if you're going to muscle in and do it, shut the fuck up and do it. I'm trying. Uh, hey, not hard enough in my eyes. Obviously very nervous. And, um, yeah, unknown territory for them. They're just used to being busy one night a week, Saturday night. So, yeah, it's Wednesday, and yeah, we're busy every night of the week. Get used to it because that's what it's like in the real world. Bones are both with sauce. The one of the on the bones is with sauce, and then the other on the bone is plain. Yes, I know. As the orders stack up, it's Alex who's under pressure. Alex is burning. Fuck you. Oh, fuck me. Alex, what are you doing? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just fucked to bloody soul. Uh, we're trying to create a fucking reputation and not destroy it, yeah? Barry, happy birthday! Yeah, happy birthday! And my, my mill has been dropped 
on the floor. Alex, dude, listen to me. Focus. Alex lost it tonight, but Jamie kept his cool. My choice for head chef is a no-brainer. It was a tough night, though, you know, a tough night. It's always hard cooking. Cooking's a fucking hard job anyway. Sometimes he loses the plot, but at the same time, I'm not in a position to tell him off. Just for some reason today, I just came out and started fucking directing the fucking traffic, you know? There's still a big problem with the restaurant decor. I've got an idea okay. to put a different colour in here. I don't want to argue. The... I'm, I'm going with you because Good. I have thought it over and I am going to let you have your head because you've said a lot of very sensible things about moving forward. Now the decor is in my hands. Alan's relaxed a little. I do like to be beside the seaside. But will the staff accept my choice for their new head chef? We need to establish a leader in that kitchen. Alex, it's not you. I know. Last night's performance confirmed that. Jamie, forget the travels. Commit to Alan. Do you understand that? I understand. I'm happy to do it. I know I can do it. I want to do it. One final role that's missing. Alan's role. Your role, you are... The lovey, the perfect host, is a structure. And God help you if you fuck it up. It's high noon. Alan knows Ruby Tates will change, but doesn't know about my totally new colour scheme. Hi, buddy. Hello. Come in. Are you well? I'm well. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. Right. What's the matter? I said, my God. My God. Right, first impressions? Austere. Austere. I, I just feel it's a, 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 bit, a bit clinical, really. I suppose I think I'm a, a little bit... Well, a, a, a bit insignificant now, because I don't feel... what I feel we're going down the kind of Harry Ransom style route. What I'm trying to do, Alan... Is to make a business. Is to make a business. Yes, and that's why I'm here. Sure. I do, I do understand that. And it's so important yeah. to make it your own. Yeah. And this is about as close to fucking Harry Ramsden as I am to fucking being head chef in McDonald's. Yeah. Brings me on to my next bone of contention. Ruby Tates. Well, you stripped me of everything. Big deep breath. I don't fucking care if you don't like it. I don't fucking care. But you're missing the most tangible asset of this fucking restaurant. Loves. Now you can argue, call me an ass, do whatever you fucking want. I don't care. You're missing a trick. Loves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ha, ha. Um, Big night tonight. Um, Ruby Tate's a sunk without a trace, and no, it looks beautiful in there. Loves has been reborn. Alan hates the decor, but what about my new menu? I'm talking about making this restaurant a pillar in the community. On the board there, yeah, we've got our fish. And for the first time, you know, the customers have got the choice whether it's poached, grilled, or fried. Right. So we're using sustainable fish and making a bit of a statement with it as well. Poached, grilled or fried, the customer has the right. To launch Love's sustainable menu, I've invited some foodie friends. Brighton Royalty, Zoe Ball and Norman Cook. Evening. Are you with Julian? Yeah. Oh, right, right. Oh, right. Come it's good to put the wind at my new head chef with a couple of VIPs. The exciting thing about the fish, yeah? Steam. Yeah. Poached, fried or grilled. Fish done, you know, however you wish. So it's an alternative. I think in a traditional fish restaurant, lemon salt, I reckon, is always a good gauge as to how, how good the fish is, is cooked. Lemon salt is beautiful. The kitchen's already confused and a lemon sole has gone missing. Yep. 19. Now, hang on, wait, wait. All right, we have a problem. There's a fuck up, man. All that is going together. All right. uh, this one will be like, if they won't send that, like three minutes away. All right, so all that, all that the door. chefs can't afford to screw up tonight. No, I'm not sure who's, if they're having lemon butter, close to lemon butter. This is a, yeah, this is really important. Remember the ticket came first in? Yep. 
not 40 minutes later, you've got to check and, and read it through. And if you're not too sure, then you cross it off. Okay. Yeah, so that's three sol or two sol? It's two sol, both off the bone. Yeah. Okay. They've sorted the mess, and Zoe's sol is ready to go. It's a delicate silver service operation. No, and you didn't even get flushed or anything. Well done. Enjoy. And the verdict. That's really, really good. I'm eating pollock, which I've never actually had before. Um, it's very nice. It's a bit. It's a bit like black cod. Actor Chris Ellison is a seafood fan. I've been here before, so I, I, know, I can see the transformation. Well, I like it. I think it's really good. You can't not love the name Love, can you? So, successful name, I think. Tonight, Alan's made two and a half grand, but is he satisfied? Everyone likes the name. Everyone likes the decor. <laughs> and I'm ready to throw the towel in. <laughs> so it's good, it's good, yeah? So well done, Gordon. If you're in there anywhere, it's, it's obviously working. He's right, I'm wrong, and, and it doesn't really matter as long as we're going to make a success. That's all we need. Kitching. Till, money in the till. Thanks very much. Good night, very good night. Customer very happy, kitchen on fire. Did a fucking good job tonight. Um, Alan, I just hope he seriously yeah, picks this up and runs with it and puts everything into it because look at it. Great area, great produce, on the beach. What more could you ask for? Two months later, and I'm feeling peckish for some seafood. Back in Brighton to meet up with the right honourable Alan Love. Um, I hope this guy is no longer in denial. He is a showbiz lovey. He's got a heart of gold, but can he run a business? I've heard they're selling takeaway, so I'm going to order some incognito. Good afternoon, my fish restaurant. I'd like to order a couple of portions of fish and chips, please. The, ni the, the name is Jimmy. OK, two portions of fish and chips, takeaway. Can't wait to see this. Here we go. Can I catch the unsuspecting chefs napping again? Right, let's go and see where Jimmy's fish and chips are. All right. Hey, mate. Good to see you. Hello, how are you? Good, mate. Good. Yeah, good to see you. Well, <laughs> gentlemen, how you doing? Busy, busy, busy. Yeah, good. Fish and chips, mad. Talking about fish and chips, I fucking ordered them 20 minutes ago. Two Did portions you? for Jimmy. Did the order come through? Ready, eh? Good. Yes, please. <laughs> I thought you were to you. ring up and say you were Jimmy, yeah? <laughs> on the phone. Jimmy, I'm Here's looking for two answer. portions of fish and chips. I put the order through five minutes ago. Alex, is day off? He's gone. No longer works here. He's what? He's gone. How long did he go? About two days after you left. Why? Uh, he couldn't change. He had customers coming in at 11.30, take away fish and chips, fuck off. I'm not ready. I can fucking wait till 12 o'clock. We're not open. <laughs> you, you fired him. Between me and Alan, Alan had the last say, but I want him to go, so... Alan fired somebody? He's a hard bastard, man. Alex is back in France. He claims he left because he couldn't accept a lower-paid position. Thank Loves has been rammed <laughs> since its launch. How are you? How are you, buddy? Something's changed. You look well. Well, it's been... Success is a wonderful thing, isn't it? It makes you feel so much better. Um, the situation with the house, have you managed to take it off the market? I haven't, actually. I, I've got an offer on it, which I've accepted. Really? Uh, only, uh, uh, at the moment, I can't really afford it. He may not have saved his home, but Alan's tripled his turnover. Loves takes 14 grand a week. With Alan, it's star attraction. <laughs> and you probably recognise these, don't you? Well, it, they used to have your name on the back years ago. <laughs> we can come down here from time to time and reminisce. Yeah. Did you seriously used to have your name on the back of the <laughs> chair? That's incredible. I love you. <laughs> Which one would you like? Alan sliding. Love Star. <laughs> so when you are thinking of sliding back to those old fucking crony <laughs> ways again, yeah, get your ah. chair out, my son. Roll when you're ready, Mr. DeBille. <laughs> that fucking batter looks lovely. <laughs> and still, yeah, nice and crispy. Which for a takeaway is quite unique. <laughs> I have to say, fucking delicious. Mm. Huh? Good. It's good. I was going to go skint, and probably within six months, I would have been absolutely flat broke. No house, no money, no business. That yeah. would have gone. But it's really refreshing to hear you're fighting for the business now. Mm. If there's a dream, the dream is to yeah. take the brand name yep. further. Truthfully, mm -hmm. in denial still, or yeah. running a business? Running a business. Uh-huh. Mm. Absolutely. You're going to keep it that way? Mm. You know that. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's only volume this. Um, thank you for coming this evening. Did you enjoy dinner? Yay! Excellent. Yeah, um, this man's happy. And he's got every reason to be happy. The restaurant's consistent, he's using sustainable fish, and it's become a phenomenal local eatery. And for the first time ever, Alan Love is now running his business. His business is not running him. So, fucking good news. I'm really happy.